Dr. Murali Dharan. I'm a physician based at Palakkad. I, I have more than 30 years of experience in, as a physician. Okay. And uh, the Palakkad is located in Kerala. So today we are uh, talking about the understanding hypertension. It is actually, uh, this talk is meant for the general public, not for the medical professionals. And uh, understanding hypertension, our today's discussion will be on what high blood pressure is and how to prevent it. Generally, everyone would like to have healthy or normal blood pressure, but what exactly does it mean? Basically, each time when the heart beats, it pumps blood into the blood vessels. This creates a pressure against the walls of the blood vessels. This is called blood pressure. That is, the blood is always on flow and it some puts pressure on the walls because blood vessels are always elastic. So, they have a, um, the, uh, the, that's known as a mean arterial pressure. So, only if there is pressure, the blood can flow on, on normally. Uh, normally, in a healthy person, it rises and falls throughout the day. But when blood pressure remains high for a longer time or left untreated, it can lead to serious health complications. In general, persistent increase in blood pressure higher than normal uh, is known as hypertension. So what is normal? That, that we should know first. Normally, uh, everyone says that uh, in general public, as they know, it's 120-80 is normal. But actually, there is a range in which it's normal. Uh, blood pressure is measured in two ways. One is systolic uh, measurement and this is diastolic measurement. Systolic measurement is one which when the bl blood is pumped through the blood vessel from the heart, the, that pressure is higher than uh, diastolic pressure. Diastolic pressure is one when there is heart is relaxed. And this is the uh, diastolic and systolic. Usually, systolic blood pressure ranges from 90 to 140. And the highest is 140 and uh, lowest is 90 in a normal adult. But in children, it's a bit lower. And the diastolic pressure uh, in normal range is from 60 to 90. So normally, in between, the average, is, uh, you know, it's called on uh, normal blood pressure uh, and it's called 128. But always, um, as a physician, we look into a range, not a blood pressure, because it's not a constant value. It's always varying from time to time. So high blood pressure usually develops over time. It can happen because of unhealthy lifestyle choices. For example, not having enough regular physical activity, obesity, smoking, high alcohol consumption, and stress also present. And there is another factor called um, hereditary or genetic factor when the parents are hypertensive or the hypertension runs in the family um, people develop to, uh, tend to develop hypertension in their later life <clears throat> so age as people get older the arteries can stiffen up and narrow, narrow as excess of fat builds up uh, the blood vessels as age advances it becomes it loses its elasticity, so it becomes stiffer. So that causes higher blood pressure. Family high blood pressure, one or uh, more um, family members with hypertension increase the pressure risk of developing hypertension. Then excess salt intake is also known as right blood, rise to blood pressure. Not, in, not eating enough foods with potassium can increase blood pressure and the risk of stroke and chronic diseases. Eating processed and fatty foods increase fats through the body and make the heart work harder to push the blood through the body, hence causing blood pressure to rise. On the other hand, lack of physical activity is also linked to obesity and further high blood pressure. Call high cholesterol always tends to get deposited in the blood wall, blood vessel walls, and the blood vessel wall thickens and stiffens. So this increases the blood pressure. Another one is stress. Reacting to stress, unhealthy ways or not managing stress can also increase blood pressure. Uh, usually, hypertension has very minimal symptoms. It, it may not, it, it may be silent for a long time. And suddenly, patient can develop a complication of hypertension like stroke or um, heart attack and all those things. And um, so, hypertension, if it is, though it's silent, it should be measured 
uh, often so that we can diagnose it earlier. It's also known as a silent killer because it has no, no or very minimal symptoms. It puts people at risk of several diseases from cardiovascular problems to kidney failure, stroke and even damage of blindness. Moving on, hypertension does not have any obvious signs or symptoms. That is why it is called a silent killer. So hence, early and accurate diagnosis is very important in management of hypertension. Measuring blood pressure is the only way to know whether a person has high blood pressure. So at least once in a while, like once in six months or once in a year, everyone should have their blood pressure checked. And if it is higher than, it is higher in the upper limit of normal, like 140, 90 is the upper limit of normal. If it is nearing that upper limit of normal, you should um, check uh, often so that whether it crosses the limits and uh, you can treat it earlier. So early and accurate diagnosis is very important in management of hypertension. Measuring the blood pressure is the only way to know whether the person has high blood pressure or not. Generally, when symptoms do occur, they include morning headaches, headaches or tiredness. Vision changes, buzzing in the ears, fatigue, nausea, and vomiting. That, that happens in very high blood pressure, like on, say, 180, 110, or uh, 200 by 120, or like that. But uh, up to 160, 90, or something, patient may be symptomless, they're moving with, uh, without any symptoms. A person is experiencing some of these symptoms, then one should get their blood pressure checked. Fortunately, high blood pressure can be easily diagnosed. It is usually measured with a with you no know, blood pressure instrument like a Spigma monometer, or nowadays the mercury monometer is out going out of service because um, uh, because it's being replaced with aerobic mercury aerobic um, uh, blood pressure measurement uh, machines or electronic machines. In recording two numbers, as I said earlier, systolic and diastolic. A healthy or normal blood pressure should be lower than 120-80 or it can also read 120 over 80 milligram. Hence, the upper number increases systolic blood pressure, which means pressure in the blood vessels when the heart contracts. And the lower number indicates diastolic blood pressure, means the pressure in the blood vessels when the heart is heart rests between beats. If blood pressure level is more than 140-90, then the person is person have said to have hypertension. The person have BP levels higher than this, then he or she might risk of developing serious heart diseases. If blood pressure level is more than 140, 90, the person is called hyper. The risk of prevent the risk can be prevented by prevented reduced by taking steps towards healthier lifestyle, such as so treating hypertension involves two things: one, healthier lifestyle, healthier eating habits, and regular exercise and lifestyle changes. And the second one is taking medicines. So it depends on the level of blood pressure, how it is, uh, how how high it is, and whether it is reduced by normal lifestyle changes or not. The risk can be prevented and reduced by taking steps towards healthier lifestyles such as regular exercise, healthy diet, quit smoking, and regular blood pressure monitoring helps to early identify earlier. Uh, very early that uh, hypertension, and so that can be treated. Ne next one is stress management. When adherence to medicine, if you are taking medicine, blood, blood pressure is not a curable uh, disease. Hypertension is not a curable disease. So it should be uh, controlled by any means. But if you are uh, at the, if you are at a higher level and taking medicine for a long time, you should adhere to the medicine, you continue the medicine. You cannot stop it in between. When you stop, that, that, that's some phenomenon called rebound hypertension occurs. If blood pressure is successfully controlled with such lifestyle modification, then metavoid delay and reduce need for medication. So regular exercise and physical activity. Exercise and physical activity is always uh, helpful in reducing hypertension. So a minimum of 45 minutes of daily physical exercise, at least four to five days in a week helps to reduce the hypertension. Regular exercise also helps to maintain a healthy weight, which helps in other ways also, because uh, it may reduce your diabetes also. Healthy diet. 
Diet also plants it plays an important role in controlling blood pressure. Diet with high intake of vegetable fruits and whole grains recommended for hypertensive patients for lowering blood pressure or preventing hypertension through dietary intervention or can adapt a dietary pattern. So there are various uh, different diets uh, recommended by various uh, studies. Um, but usually uh, low salt and uh, low carbohydrate and a low fat diet these things always help to reduce hypertension uh, there are various diets called dash diet or mediterranean diet and eating less saturated fat in total fat getting plenty of potassium limiting amount of sodium in the diet limiting alcohol consumption dash means it stands for dietary approaches to stop hypertension diet eating dash diet that is rich in whole grains fruits, vegetables, and low-fat low fat dairy products and skims or saturated fat and cholesterol can lower one's uh, blood pressure by up to 11 millimeter if having high blood pressure. Reducing sodium in your diet. Even small reduction in the sodium in the diet can improve the health diet and reduce blood pressure by 5 to 6 millimeter mercury if you have high blood pressure. To decrease sodium in your diet, you can consider tips like you always, whenever uh, packaged foods, read the uh, food labels. If the, the amount of sodium is usually mentioned in the food labels, eat fewer processed processed foods. Always have higher sodium uh, content, so eat fewer processed foods or lesser processed. Food. Don't add extra salt. One level teaspoon for salt is two hundred. 2,300 milligram of sodium. Avoid adding salt to food. Uh, use herbs or spices to add flavor to your food. Then quit smoking. Smoking always, the tobacco smoke always uh, stiffens the arteries very much. The artery becomes stiffens and uh, uh, it, it, it never relaxes during the diastolic period. So quitting smoking always helps reduce the blood pressure. Regular blood pressure monitoring. Nowadays, there are a lot of uh, home monitoring uh, apparatuses are available, ele both electronic and aerobic. And electronic devices are simple to use, and people can uh, measure their blood pressure by themselves. And if they found it higher, they can report immediately to the doctor or meet the doctor and find out. So the harm of the hypertension is to check their blood pressure by visiting doctors. But it's nowadays always possible to check their blood pressure. Uh, when they have a self-monitoring devices. Self-monitoring helps person to make measure BP at different times throughout the day and longer period of time. So uh, sometimes the morning BP varies from evening BP and sometimes when you are stressed or uh, doing some exercise, the BP always increases. So, so visiting doctor once in a while doesn't uh, sometimes uh, predict your uh, hypertension levels. So always we have a home monitor. Uh, always you can measure at various intervals. Morning, uh, you can record it and keep it in a notebook and log it. You can uh, record your BP in the afternoon, in the evenings, and in the midnight also. If you want, you can record and find out. So early morning blood pressure variations are always possible because early morning surge is called it's very important because whenever you get up from your bed, that really rushes and your BP goes up. And uh, that, that, is, that may be higher in some persons. So you should always uh, measure your early morning blood pressure as soon as you wake up. Or in between you wake up in the night, you just measure your blood pressure. So stress management, various ways are there. Like uh, you can uh, concentrate on other, uh, you are, develop your hobbies or something with whichever smoothing, soothing to your mind or relax yourself yoga meditation may also help so adherence to medicine a medicine to lower blood pressure may be recommended by the doctor if blood pressure consists very high adherence to the medication is very important as it controls the blood pressure regularly so hypertension is not a treatable disease you should always take medicines to prevent complications like uh, stroke or uh, hypertension related um, diseases in your eye, kidney, heart and peripheral vessels also. 
So always hypertension should kidney disease is very much important. That's when you, uncontrolled hypertension is one of the very uh, important reason for kidney chronic kidney disease. So always you should treat your hypertension to prevent your kidney disease. So adherence to a medicine, you should take medicine recommended by the doctor daily without fail. And skipping the medicine is always not good. So there is a phenomenon called rebound hypertension. You are taking a, a hypertensive medicine for a long time. And in between, suddenly you skip it for one week, 10 days, uh, 15 days. Suddenly the BP may shoot up like that. You can develop, in a, develop a stroke or bleeding into your brain, bleeding from the nose and all those things. You can develop complications. So always take your medicines regularly. Skipping a BP medicine is not at all good. So hypertension is not curable. You are supposed to take medicine life now. <clears throat> so have a healthy and fit, um, having a fit and healthy life, adapting healthy lifestyle help to enjoy a long and healthy life. High blood pressure can be prevented as well as controlled in many ways. Keeping blood pressure in normal range is very important in preventing cardiovascular complications. It is very much possible to maintain normal blood pressure levels with regular monitoring and preventing care. Okay, thank you.